So welcome to the launch of the Tapio ArchiCAD API Grasshopper plugin. So firstly, I'd like to begin by acknowledging the Jagera and Turrbal people, the tradition, traditional custodians of the land from which I'm presenting to you today. And I'd like to pay my respects to the elders past and present. Now I'd also like to extend um, the respect, and that respect, sorry, to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples that are watching this today. So. I'm really, really excited to have the opportunity today to um, assist Jorge and Greg in promoting uh, and publicly launching their new free open source uh, Tapia API um, and Grasshopper plugin. Now, I'm a very strong believer in the building of communities and I really like uh, assisting initiatives like this um, that, that I'm assisting with tonight in terms of promoting this through this event. Now, from my perspective, I kind of see this as a potential game changer for the ArchiCAD user community. Now, Graphisoft introduced um, the ability for JSON and Python to be utilized by ArchiCAD users through an API. Now, that opened the door for people that had coding capability to achieve more from ArchiCAD. And what I mean from more, I mean that that means that, that means they could get more automated processes. Now these processes could save hours for users on each and every single project. Now, the challenge being with that is that you actually have to know how to code to be able to gain those benefits. Now, a couple of months ago, Jorge actually put a post on LinkedIn about the development work that he had done with Greg. Um, and as soon as I saw it, I knew that this was gonna be something that the community needed. So I reached out to him straight away to offer my support and to help him and Greg realize this project in any way that I could possibly help. Now, me personally, I have zero coding, zero coding capability. Um, but the thing that I am really experienced in is creating processes that can successfully deliver projects of small scale to large scale, but also utilizing um, this platform that I've built up over the last decade to help bring the community together. So one of the other key things and the key messages that I want to talk about before I hand you over to Jorge and Greg is the fact that um, I also am a strong believer in the benefit in, in sharing effort and costs of development and, and seeing these opportunities uh, in the future where practices can co-contribute financially to assist in the development of some of the functionalities of what this tool can access and automate. Um, whereas the biggest challenge we face in business today is everyone looks to go about these things and processes on their own and essentially duplicating effort and uh, you know from my perspective I think it's really important that that doesn't happen. Now as part of today's event what I really want to strongly encourage you to do um, is to participate in the chat. Now you'll find the chat just below the live stream of this video I encourage you to put in comments throughout the presentation and also add in questions you may have at the time and then either in the middle of the in the middle of the uh, event or towards the back end of the event um, we'll look to go through those questions um, and try and answer them um, we'll see how we go anything that we don't get a chance to answer I'm sure there'll be a method that we discuss at the end as to how that we can communicate that information to you um, but that's enough from me. Um, this, today's webinar is nothing to do with me. It's to do with uh, Jorge from uh, Enzyme and Graham, Greg from BIM Lab. So I'd like to uh, you guys to come up on screen right now. Um, and I'd like to hand it over to you to um, continue on uh, on today's session and um, share with the world this exciting um, process that you guys have been working on over the last couple of months. So thanks very much, gents. Thank you, Nathan. Uh, thank you so much for this kind presentation and, and also for offering your help uh, to this community and, and, and this project. Um, it's really, really valuable. And as, as we said the other day, you know, any help that we can get putting together this community and and sharing the message that you just said about um, creating this innovation through a community platform 
um, it's most most appreciated. So uh, on the screen now, it's uh, well, uh, Greg uh, Wilk from Poland and working on BIM Lab, and myself. Uh, so I am the uh, one of the co-founders of Enzyme APV, a architectural firm based in Hong Kong. And, and together we have been working in some R&D projects and, and some projects related to innovation uh, based on Archicad. So we're both uh, both companies based and, and experts on Archicad use. And in the course of this collaboration, uh, we found or we opened the door to this, this new project. So may, uh, let me share my screen. Um, so the project is called Tapir. So Tapir is the is the is the name of the plugin. Um, it has an animal name because in the ecosystem of of grasshopper plugins, they all have an animal name. So we decided to uh, to go for this uh, very cute and small animal. And and Tapir is the easiest way to use this JSON Python API. Um, without the need to code. So I think that's that's the, the, the scope of it. When uh, Greg and I were um, playing with the, the, with the idea of uh, using these uh, automations and, and this API uh, within Archicad, we realized that um, not all the users are proficient or are even um, knowledgeable in any type of coding. Even if Python, it's an easy, uh, easy programming language, most of the Archicad users uh, are not familiar with with, that, with it. So uh, what we, we realize is, okay, we, we're going to have a traditional API that Archicad has that was the, the one used for um, or available for developers to create different add-ons and plugins and automations where, that were extremely useful. Uh, but the, the accessibility of the... C++ API was very uh, very difficult or, or or very low in this case because uh, C++ is a is a very uh, hard um, coding language or it's well it's not hard for professionals but for, uh, probably yes for architects and then uh, I think since Archicad 24 this uh, easier and, and newer JSON API was made available. Um, but still requires this programming knowledge. So uh, obviously more developers are familiar with JSON and Python languages. They are more modern and easier uh, programming languages, but still required some um, some programming language. Uh, we realized most of the architects they don't have those programming skills. So, uh, but we realized that a lot of architects, especially the new generation, are proficient in um, n like pr what we call the visual programming tools. Um, and this, uh, the most I think the the, the most known or the most well known. Uh, of these tools is Grasshopper. So we decided to create, uh, and the scope of this project uh, was to create a, a number of these uh, nodes for Grasshopper, or what we call a plugin in Grasshopper, that could use the power of uh, of this JSON API, and and that well um, leverage this this JSON API uh, in order to uh, enable this uh, automation. Uh, and, and and all this well uh, the, the ability for the users to create their own plugins and their own routines and their own automations in a very very easy way so regarding what it does or the features of this plugin and and what are our goals as I said uh, our goals are to leverage all these available uh, API commands uh, creating their equivalent in the grasshopper uh, world uh, we also want to have a, obviously a lot of feedback from the community. Uh, I think amongst the people that are um, that compose the, the, the community at the moment, we have uh, quite a lot of ideas to, to create workflows and uh, automations that can be also scripted as almost an out of the box uh, tools, easy tools to do. Uh, for example, I don't know, rename IDs in certain way or um, or reorganize layouts in certain way. Um, we'll see some examples later, but but we have these ideas of creating uh, combined workflows that, that are a little bit more complex that can be used straight away. Uh, so thus reducing the, the need for uh, a person that doesn't use Grasshopper uh, 
uh, they using a few nodes they can create very powerful automations and then the third of the goals that we have is uh, help Graphisoft to enlarge and to uh, expand the current scope of JSON API. The JSON API only access certain parts of the Archicad uh, files and functions. So we want to um, hack into this JSON API and expand the scope, creating more uh, available commands for, for us to use. So uh, we're looking at the website at the moment that we have put together. There is a lot of information here. So uh, please feel free to open the website and, and browse through it. Um, as we go, in terms of the categories of the of the nodes or the um, or these commands that we are crea creating in in Grasshopper at the moment, uh, there are some commands that uh, enable you to do some work with attributes in in the Archicad file. Uh, we can also use certain commands that will uh, help uh, or or that will enable to also create automations on the BIMX side, also creating your um, uh, interfaces in BMX and accessing to the uh, BMX API. We have some certain amount of commands that enable you to work with classifications in the Archicad project. And then also in a, in a similar way uh, to work with properties, custom properties, and uh, so user-defined properties and also the standard properties of Archicad. And then we have other nodes that are related to the data input and methods that we're also developing. So at the moment, uh, we have these six types of, of, of works. Um, this is the concept that we were uh, describing before about uh, tapping into the Archicad C++ API through the creation of some uh, translators between the Archicad C++ API and the JSON API. So we're going to be working on, on this, enhancing or, or expanding the, the number of available commands in the JSON API. And if you like, you, we have here a list of the nodes. Uh, all of this, obviously, it's a work in progress. So uh, we will add more information um, in, the coming, uh, in the coming weeks. But we have a list of every single node that has been already scripted. Uh, you can also filter them through, through these categories. And we will have an explanation of what each of these nodes is doing. So you can check here. Uh, some of it. Um, the next thing that I want to talk about is uh, we're going to have, or, or we have already a public roadmap. For it, for us, it's very important to to have um, this roadmap public and uh, exposed to the community, since we have we want to have this project. Um, I mean, this is a project that it's done by the community of Archicad users for the community of Archicad users. So we want to have this of the community of yourself and, and your colleagues uh, that have ideas, that want to test out the, our, our uh, plugin and, and um, give us some feedback regarding bugs or, or regarding new capabilities that you would like to, to see implemented. So we have this public roadmap here uh, that you can check. So we have this dashboard here that explains a little bit of what has been done and, and what is the progress on, on, this, um, on this plugin. So far, we from the 48 uh, available commands in the JSON API, we have tackled and we have uh, made available in the um, Grasshopper interface around 40% of them. Uh, we have added an extra 35 new concepts that we want to implement that you will see here. So that's why this, uh, this uh, work in progress bar grows from the um, JSON library commands to the overall um, roadmap. And here you can check the different categories of the, uh, of the commands that we have. OK. Um, and then I want to just mention why we are developing this plugin in, in Grasshopper. So we know that, uh, well, Grass, Rhino Grasshopper, uh, I think it's the most um, specialized or, or the most uh, used platform for uh, computation and, and automations. Uh, most of us are familiar, the, the ones the, who compose the, the community at the moment are familiar with uh, Grasshopper uh, development and Grasshopper automations and, and designing in Rhino Grasshopper. 
uh, we have been trying and working on the uh, Archicad Live connection for a long time. And we saw an opportunity of expanding the capabilities of this live connection uh, as it is now. So graphics of uh, from a open source and community approach to expand and extend all these capabilities. So, so that's why uh, we decided to um, use this Grasshopper um, platform and, and framework to to create these uh, automations. We know that uh, Rhino Grasshopper it's a it's a paid software, so not every single Archicad user will have access to to Rhino. If uh, obviously if they don't pay the a, a light but we thought it would be the easiest way to start and the easiest way to tap into this uh, this community of uh, computational designers and and also uh, since Grasshopper has already an, a big number of nodes that enable uh, to work with information, uh, mathematical operations, and uh, and also uh, other like programming tools. So we started with with Grasshopper. Our plan. Um, obviously, we, we are very, um, uh, I mean, we want to make this project a, a long, long-term long project, and, and we want to make this as, as good as we can. Uh, and um, so what we want to do is once we have a finished product or something that it's already designed and it has a structure and has a, uh, a very strong uh, use with the community, we're planning to move or to make um, or actually to branch the development of this also into other platforms. So the first one that we will uh, like to explore is Blender. Uh, Blender has also a existing already node-based um, platform inside Blender that enables to uh, create automations and create uh, scripts that are based on, on a node editor. Uh, Blender, it's a free software, so you, the majority of Archicad users that don't have a uh, Rhino license, they will be able to use this uh, for free. And then we're also thinking about um, in the future extending this into a um, specific node editor created for Archicad. But this is this is a very long-term project. We're no, we're now m focused completely on on the Grasshopper side. So this will be the progression that we have in mind. Uh, in terms of the roadmap, you can check exactly uh, what are the, the, the tasks that the team is working on, who is working on the task, and what is the status of, of, the, of the task, what type of node, and what is the priority. So we want to be very transparent with, with all the work that, um, that it's happening. And most importantly, we want, we're thirsty for your ideas, for your feedback. So we, I cannot stress more the fact that this is a community project. So it's not a commercial product. We are looking into uh, create a sustainable um, platform that is growing with uh, with all the Archicad versions, uh, with the ideas of the community, with the needs also of the industry. So we're trying to collect as many ideas as we can. And we're also trying to collect, of course, as many help as we can uh, in order to make this a long-term and uh, sustainable uh, development project. So one of the things that we decided to do is um, we want to make public every single request that we have, uh, even if it's a silly one. So we want to make all of these requests public. So every time that you submit a feedback, a bug report, or a request for a, um, a wish, or a, a workflow that you would like to see implemented, we're gonna see it here, and we will see whether it's a, it's an approved uh, approved to the roadmap, or it's still waiting for maybe an internal discussion or more information regarding to us. So, in order to do that, uh, we have prepared a feedback page in here. Uh, so we have two different channels for uh, for you to uh, participate into this project. So first of all. Uh, we have this feedback feed, feedback form that uh, we would like everyone to use. So in this way, we can minimize the amount of, uh, of admin work of consolidating and um, and um, and getting all these uh, ideas uh, together. So 
we would like to hear your name and a contact email so we can have we can contact you back for more information uh, we want to know what type of whether it's a bug or a just a wish uh, just put put a name into this uh, wish or, or, or back so we can track it and just have a simple description and if you want optionally attach some screenshots or some uh, video capture for us to understand properly what is the the issue so all of these requests and and bug reports will go into our database and and we will start slowly sharing this in with all the different developers that uh, so generously join the community so far so the the second way that we are uh, or the so the second door that we're open for, for you to this community is a Discord channel. So Discord is a platform, uh, well, actually like a chat or a, yeah, almost like a chat uh, space for that was designed for game for gamers. And we have created this open uh, Discord channel where we have uh, different rooms here to discuss different stuff, like for example, today's event or gathering ideas and feedback from the different community. You see. We have already a quite strong and and um, um, strong and uh, participative community, and in in here we also have a, our internal meeting room for all the developers that join the project, uh, as well as as some training material that we are preparing for you. So please please join the Archicad the Discord channel, the API Discord channel. We're gonna share um, we're gonna share the uh, link with you, but if you go to the Tapir website, there is a uh, banner uh, all over the place for you to join the Discord channel. So just follow the links and and join. Um, within the website, uh, we have also a training area. So we are developing uh, when we can um, different videos for you to um, to understand how is the use of this plugin and and sharing different examples and uh, we will also have here uh, documentation when we have the time to, to prepare this documentation as well as sharing some of the files sample files that we are uh, currently using for training for uh, you to get started quickly with the use of it so all of these will go into this uh, training area of the website um, and last but not least uh, I want to thank uh, everyone who joined the community, uh, all the developers, all the beta testers, uh, and everyone that is excited as as us, as Greg and I, on this project. So just a little bit of background and history. Uh, Greg and, and myself started working together in this plugin um, based on a R and D uh, project that we had in in the in our company in Enzyme. Uh, we found that this project obviously had a large scope that we initially anticipated and we don't want to be or, or we didn't want to um, to shoot short we want to actually shoot for the moon and and we decided to open up this project into the open source space uh, giving all the data that was already produced and, and all the tools that were already produced to for free to the community uh, and in exchange what we uh, what we would like is to have excited people like as helping us to to develop this this plugin uh, further. So uh, I want to just thank everyone that has already been uh, interested and helping in the plugin. Of course, Nathan, that is helping us with uh, ideas, beta testing, training, promoting this. Uh, Stian, uh, who is the lead developer in Data Trees, uh, and 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 also a very um, experienced. Uh, uh, programmer, uh, we have Matteo Di Filippo from Milan, Aitor from Donosti, Spain. Uh, we have Francois in, in South Africa, who is also actively beta tasting and, and helping us with the promotion of this. Thanks, Francois from uh, South Africa. Uh, we have Rui from Portugal also helping us with the scripting, with the design of the plugin, beta testing, training. Uh, he's helping with everything. We have also Mario that is helping us with training, with the design and beta testing. Mateusz, Abraham from Kenya, uh, Samosi uh, from Hungary, and then Koshik from, from Germany or who is working on Germany. 
uh, who is also an architect and, and software developer. And, and together, all of us, uh, we are the current uh, developer and, and active community of, um, of Tapir. Uh, we would like this list to be long and, uh, and you know, and, and keep growing and growing as we think that this is a project that can benefit a lot of companies, a lot of architects all over the world. Um, so please don't be shy if you have anything, uh, even if you have ideas or you just want to be a beta tester and, and um, you don't know how to script. But if you know how to script, please come and, and join us. Um, where can you get this plugin before we uh, jumped into the demo? So there are two ways to, to download the plugin. Uh, if you're familiar, we have a Food for Rhino uh, page where you can just simply go and download, sorry for the Spanish translation, but uh, download the plugin from straight from the Food for Rhino page. And then we also have a open uh, GitHub page where you can just uh, download the, uh, the zip with all the different files please check the instructions here for installation and go and, and have fun with it. Uh, just a little um, disclaimer, obviously this is the, the first release. Uh, it's already a working uh, prototype. So there are some people that are using this uh, plugin already for, for production, but please keep in mind that it's an experimental software, uh, that it's a free software. So um, so use it with caution and just also keep in mind that we are currently also updating the thing uh, uh, quite frequently. So please uh, have that in consideration and, and, and be uh, stay tuned for all the different um, updates. So without further ado, I'm going to give the, the presenting to Greg, who is going to show us a little bit of the of the usage of the plugin. Mm, OK. Uh, yeah, mm, I would prepare today uh, mm, as a demo uh, two short uh, use cases, uh, how, uh, how we can work with this uh, plugin. As Jorge said, it's um, in, in fact, the, the basic idea behind of this is uh, just to wrap it up uh, in the visual, uh, in, in, into visual coding, visual programming uh, interface. Um, so to make it easier for non-programmers, but people familiar with the uh, algorithm, algorithms and, and working on grasshopper-like editors. Uh, uh, so, um, I would like to emphasize this, what um, Jorge said about uh, your, your contribution to this project. Uh, the one is, of course, this hard, uh, hard coding uh, contribution where you can help with, uh, with developing this. But uh, very important is uh, for us to gather uh, live uh, user ca uh, cases of um, everyday problems with data management uh, in uh, Archicad projects. So uh, think of this as uh, when you will test the, the current version, uh, probably you will see some constraints, uh, but uh, rather think uh, at this stage on expanding this functionality so uh, that's why we got this form, and uh, that's why we uh, those mm, uh, the, those wishes we we can uh, then qualify as uh, something that we can already do uh, in this current version. So then we can just show how to how to make it. We can thanks to this we can prepare more training materials um, uh, that will explain uh, specific uh, specific user cases use cases. Um, then we can see if maybe there is a, some functionality that we can just add that based on this uh, current uh, state of, of development of JSON uh, API. So by using this uh, available uh, comments that are uh, provided by uh, Graphisoft. And the third uh, 
third level, let's say, of, of these user cases, the most complex is where we can develop uh, a custom uh, comments through uh, custom add-on uh, to extract and expose the um, ARCHICAD API uh, comments to create some more uh, advanced workflows. Uh, so this is what I, what I will what I would like to show you now. It's it's quite a simple. Um, let me quite simple uh, case. Okay, it's a it's a simple case uh, that will uh, show how to. Uh, it's something that was um, uh, someone asked if it's possible to change the ID of elements in, in more um, advanced way than it's possible through ID manager in ARCHICAD. So we prepared this simple case where we have a, um, uh, a one floor uh, with the windows and with the IDs, as you can see, all the windows, they have the same ID at, at the beginning. And we would like to change this ID according to the story of uh, of the walls and, and the windows on which the, uh, they are placed, and on the uh, room related to those uh, windows. So, uh, uh, for this reason, we created uh, custom properties that reads the number uh, of the floor and the name of the floor, but in this case, we'll use only the number. It's also, we prepared it like this to show uh, that we can read building properties and uh, custom user, uh, user defined property. So uh, the first step uh, we have to do uh, when we start working on, on the top here is to establish the connection so we have a special node for this that um, establish the port and connects to uh, to ARCHICAD. And then we can collect the elements. We have many uh, methods of collecting elements. And here, uh, here we can see uh, uh, one of the nodes that it's uh, just, uh, it's covering the con adjacent comment that it's called uh, select elements by type. Uh, and as you can see, uh, uh, there is a quite sneaky method of, of visualizing the, 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 the possible solutions and options uh, just by passing the information to a panel. So uh, just by printing to panel, we can see uh, the bunch of options. So in this case, we have uh, types of elements that we want to select. And as we can see, the window is uh, uh, windows are number three. So we use the simple slider uh, node to control uh, the output. And in this case, when we got the windows selected, we can see that the windows were selected, and they are represented by the um, by the internal IDs of elements. Uh, then another uh, another node very important is to uh, uh, picking up the property that we are interested in. In our case here, it will be uh, ID of the element. So here you can see uh, by analogy that the, there is a print to panel option that first uh, shows the groups of building properties. Uh, uh, so uh, they are grouped how they are named in, in ARCHICAD. Mm, uh, so first we are choosing the group. In our case, we choose the general uh, property. And in this group, we can find the ID of element. So uh, the, another output is giving us the bunch of properties that lays uh, behind this, this group. So in general, we have so many uh, building properties and as a Number one, we get uh, element ID, so it's already uh, it's already picked, and then we, thanks to this, we we are receiving at the end we're receiving the internal ID of this property. So now we can work with this ID uh, to uh, collect the data from elements 
from this specific property. Mm. So uh, now we have uh, the uh, ID of this uh, of the property, and uh, now just for visualizing, we are uh, collecting actual uh, values of this uh, of this element. So here we see uh, the another node called get property value. We connect the ID property, I mean property ID, and the elements. And as our output, we we got the um, uh, uh, compound data set of uh, of the values it's compounded because uh, except of the uh, value itself it also gives us the type of the um, of this property in this case it's a string and a status it's not as important as the first uh, first par pair or, uh, like a value so um, then we can uh, deconstruct this compound uh, output so uh, we can deconstruct it and uh, extract just the uh, IDs. So you, we can see now um, that since all the elements got the same ID, we, we just got the list of, of those IDs. So the, the next element, because we want to create the new ID that will be basing on the uh, uh, related zone number, so uh, again, we are choosing the get property, but in this case, we are picking up the related zone number uh, property. Mm, so first we need to see what number is it and just uh, choose it by the uh, slider node. So again, we uh, obtain the external ID of this property. And uh, now we can get the value uh, of this of this property. So uh, again, we uh, we are using uh, the same node called uh, get property value, and we repeat the process. So uh, uh, providing the ID of property and the list of elements. And again, we got this compound output. So uh, at the end, we. Uh, we see that we got the number of the related zone for each element. And, and we repeat this process for the third time to get the, the story uh, number. So we can see that this process is quite uh, straightforward, but in this time we are using custom uh, user-defined object uh, property. So you see the first group uh, the, the, the first uh, output is showing us, in fact, all the possible, uh, all the existing uh, groups of, prop of custom properties. And one of them is this Tapir group uh, that I created uh, in the ARCHICAD file. Uh, so then we choose um, this property group, it's number 16. And then uh, we output exactly to see what properties are available in this group. We got only two properties, story number and story name. We choose the story number. Uh, and again, we got the internal ID of this property. So uh, we get the value, connect the this property. And again, the same. The cool thing is you can see that we are working on the same source of data, the same list of uh, elements. So now we have uh, all the um, elements to, to create this compound ID. So uh, we have a floor number here, a list of uh, then the related zone, I mean, room number. And just to make it more complex, we will have like a prefix and separator uh, just to uh, create this ID. Mm -hmm. And uh, here the process is uh, is using the concatenating uh, node in the, of Grasshopper. So we will uh, create this uh, compound ID. I believe that maybe there is a simpler uh, simpler way to to create this um, composition, but just to make it clear, uh, we make it with the with uh, by re repeating the same node here so we see that the output is almost there uh, uh, so there is like a prefix and the number 
And at the end, we would like to uh, give the unique uh, index of, for each window. So we are just using the series node and count the number of elements. So all the element or all the nodes, all the IDs are created. And there is another new node here, which is called set the property value. And it works in a similar way. We just provide the property ID uh, for plugin to know uh, which property we want to set for which we want to set the new value. And we need the list of elements for which the value will be um, updated. So it's the list of elements. And at the end, it's the list of the values that we want to uh, use, okay? So we connect all of those. And here is uh, one um, thing that needs to be a bit explained. It's the, uh, it's a serialization of the list. Uh, the, for those who know how Grasshopper works, this is a list of, of entries. So there's like a 15 uh, strings here, but to make it mm, this uh, plugin more effective uh, when sending data to Archicad, we are uh, like we are packing them into the one string. It's called ser serializing. For those who know something about programming, the, it's uh, it's commonly known. Uh, so this serial serializing just uh, converts the list of elements into the one string. So in, instead of fifteen. Uh, of repeating this process 15 times, we are in fact sending one string of data and all the process of updating is, is taking place only once. So um, uh, this is helpful for many other situations, but um, also for the efficiency of, of, uh, uh, of, of the work. Okay, so we set the value and we see here that the um, uh, ID was changed according to our setup. Uh, so we made it. That was really fast. That was fast. Uh, <laughs> and uh, it was done for all the windows. So you can see now, of course, uh, we, uh, we send it to, to change the ID, but we could also send it to any property to change the value of, of any property uh, that we want. But uh, with with the with the um, with IDs, it's uh, I think that this is the most problematic uh, um, situation because in Archicad, in the ID manager, uh, you well you, you cannot do all the um, all the processes um, with the with the ID string. Yeah, mm. I think especially you cannot you can use the ID manager for for many things but you cannot access any property and also the way the the um, the order of application of this id is also you cannot really control it it's based on i think the 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 order of placement of the file or the order of selection so it's really hard to um to control and and also the id of an element uh, it's not like a custom property that you can use expressions to build up from different source of, sources of data. So using the, the Tapir plugin, we can access, to be honest, any property in the Archicad file or almost any property, we can use it to compose uh, the IDs in this example. And we could, for example, I mean, just to say something, we could use an external database, uh, connect to Grasshopper, and then use that database to fill uh, for example, properties or fill the IDs of element. So it's not really limited to what we've done, but what we want to to uh, show you is, okay, uh, actually the, the possibilities are endless. So as long as you have a clear direction of what data do you want to uh, access and change in Archicad and, um, and, and you have a similar structure of data in either in Grasshopper or in any database in an Excel file, in a cloud-based platform, uh, anywhere. We can take all the, the information and input them into the available properties in, in Archicad. So I think it's it's really powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the, exactly. Only constraints are just uh, the number of building properties in this case. 
And of course, yeah. to remember that some of them are read-only properties. So uh, in, in ID, it's, uh, it's, it's unique because you can read and write the, the ID of elements. But, but of course, the others, like for example, the height of the element is only read-only. So for those who are thinking that, oh, maybe we could you know, like, uh, apply new height automatically and change the height of the elements, uh, uh, it's not possible in this way. Uh, this could be possible by just uh, uh, exposing the Archicad API, this is what I said at the beginning, uh, through the Adam. Uh, but since it's a more complex process, uh, we would, that's why we would like to hear your uh, opinions on, and, and ideas for, the, uh, for use cases. So then we could just uh, develop this add-on uh, by starting from the most uh, important functions, that the most needed functions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And another, Good. another, another, another example is it's also it's very interesting. It it has in fact nothing to do with the with the Python API. It, it, it was just um, I, I came across accidentally on, on this. It's uh, Bimix uh, API. Uh, but then uh, when I start to read about this, uh, it's uh, it, the process of um, creating uh, extensions for BIMX because this API is accessible and it, it's constructed like this that you have to install uh, a small uh, extension that just extends some functionality of the, of the BIMX. Uh, no, uh, two requirements. Uh, one requirement important is that you need to have a pro version of BIMX to uh, to load this uh, uh, to load this extension. Extensions, yeah. And and extensions are uh, well, it's quite interesting uh, solution because uh, it was created to um, make BIMX application uh, capable to to be to work as a interface for uh, as an interface uh, for facility management uh, tools uh, so like a connection between uh, a model and some external third-party web services uh, custom or mm, just available on the market through the uh, rest api uh, and but also it gives some uh, nice um, workflow uh, Probably all of you know that uh, it's possible to create hyperlinks to elements or hyperlinks um, to a bunch of elements in, in, in BIMX, but it's very tedious work because mostly uh, it's done by hand or in Excel, you have to create this link manually. Uh, but yeah. this, extent, uh, with this bunch of nodes gives you the great opportunity to create it automatically. Uh, but what is more, what I found out when developing uh, those nodes, that we can have an access to uh, a layouts uh, that are embedded into BIMX file. So uh, thanks to this, we can create the links uh, directly to layouts. Uh, and th this is the case I, I would like to show you uh, in this case. Um, so uh, it works uh, in this way that uh, is this one. Uh, it works in this. Uh, probably you you came across such a situation where you have a, a BIMX file with a set of layouts, uh, and those layouts. Uh, of course, uh, they are connected to model and they are generated, uh, they are connected to model in the way that uh, we can go from the layout to model and uh, from the model to layout. But there are several types of uh, layouts that you cannot access in this way. Uh, uh, for example, imagine a situation where you have a layout that has no the view uh, with the model, uh, plan view or section, but just a PDF or some other documentation, some specification, and you would like to have a direct connection uh, from model element to its documentation. Of course, 
uh, think of this more globally, you can have an access to the external database. So this hyperlink could just be URL and lead you to uh, uh, I see. lead you to lead you to an external data. But in this case, uh, uh, you can see here that uh, what we would like to do is to provide the hyperlink and direct connection between the windows and the specification of these windows. In this case, it's just a page of a PDF. Uh, so it's not connected to model anyhow, right? Yeah. And uh, the thing is that we can, of course, um, one solution is to create the custom property, but what the uh, extension gives us, it's the possibility of creating the button that it's closed, it's, it's in the context menu uh, here. You can, uh, you know this, that when you tap on the element, you have this context menu. And what we will do, we will create extra button here that will just lead us to this uh, documentation. Of course, think of this as a, as a wider example uh, and think of the possibilities you can uh, achieve. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the first thing uh, when establishing the, well, for creating the um, extension uh, is, uh, to create uh, uh, the main node for this, it's uh, it's called bake um, create extension, and it's baking the extension to file. And the minimum uh, required parameters uh, that we have to connect it's the uh, name of the extension. The extension file it's a simple text file. In fact, it's a JSON file, uh, but with the BIMX X extension uh, name. So what I'm doing here now, it's uh, I create a new file called, called Tapir extension bmx. As you can see, it's not existing file. It's a, it's a new file that will be created. So it's a bmx file, I connect it here. Then I create the button uh, for baking. So each time I press the button, the file will be uh, updated. Yeah. And uh, the third thing we need to provide, it's just a name for extension that will appear in bmx application. So here uh, I'm putting the putting the name, and uh, so these three parameters are required. And when we press the button, uh, the file is created. So we can see. And what is important, uh, this folder I created here, it's in fact in Dropbox. It could be in any uh, in, in further versions future versions, there will be uh, possible to use other uh, cloud uh, storage services. And at this stage, it's, it works for Dropbox. So uh, basically, uh, after creating this uh, extension, we can uh, obtain a direct link. It's important because this direct link we can copy here. As you can see, I, I'm copying this uh, URL to this file. Why it's needed? Because uh, there is something like updating process and this BIMX extension, uh, it, it's come up to like this, that if we provide a direct link to cloud storage, uh, then uh, we don't have to, you know how it is with the updating the BIMX file. You, you have to uh, click on the storage, uh, on the file, BIMX file in the storage and just open it in the BIMX and then it's getting updated, right? And with yeah. extension, you can, you can do it much simpler if you provide in in file itself, if you provide this update uh, URL, then you can just click in Vimix app update extension, and it will just automatically read from the storage. So there's no need to mm -hmm. do this. Uh, what I will do here in uh, uh, just on the first run, because now we have to load it to to Vimix. So I bake it again, and I go to. Uh, mobile. So now I have to change the Dropbox folder. I can see that there is a BIMX file already here, but I have to refresh it. And when refresh, uh, we see the BIMX file. And this is the moment when we tell uh, up to open it in the uh, in a BIMX app. Okay, so open it in the BIMX app and extension is installed. But and it will appear in the right upper corner. You can see installed extension and there's a name of this extension. When you tap it, we see reload extension. So each time we will bake this extension, uh, we now don't need to go to Dropbox. Uh, we, we have to just reload this and uh, it will work. 
So, okay, uh, now it, this extension does nothing for the moment. So let's do the first thing. We need to obtain uh, uh, links to this uh, layout. So we have a special node called hyperlink layout. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, simply you we provide uh, a BIMX file, a path to a BIMX file, and then it reads this file and just uh, prints out the list of available uh, layouts. So uh, I create the um, path to the file, uh, pick the existing file, I'm picking the BIMX file in this situation. And now uh, it reads, so we can see the list of available uh, layouts. So we got, we see this three and our window specification layout is the number two. So we, prov we selected by choosing the slider, uh, by setting the slider node. Okay, we go to two. And uh, another output is just a direct uh, layout hyperlink. So you can see now the, the link is created. So it, it's like show 2D document, the name of the hypermodel and then the layout internal ID. Okay, so what we have to do now, we have to create the button in this context menu, menu and uh, just um, link this hyperlink to this button. So for that, we have a context menu node uh, and it should be connected to our main uh, create uh, extension node. So we can see that as an input, we have element context menu. So it's connected and now we have to configure it. So uh, first we need to give a title to this button. So the, it will be like Windows specification. Then we need to provide a URL and also Keep in mind that this URL can be whatever. It can be even requests for some service, web service. Um, and then we have something that in this case, it's not uh, relevant, but, but it must be provided. It's uh, how, because this uh, button also uh, allows you to open the browser or uh, open the content. And this is just uh, the way how this content is uh, it's open. It could be like in a browser or a pop-up or uh, and the other other element is just giving us the information where the button will be positioned on the left of this context menu bar or on the right. So we set it up to be on the left and uh, it's baked. So you see, we updated the extension and now we just need to reload it. So no need to go to Dropbox again and, and load. Extension is relo uh, reloaded. So we go to the model and select the window um, to see uh, the result. So we see that the button is there. We click oh, wow. it and we go directly to, to the layout. Uh, but here you can see that if we select the, any other element like wall, uh, this button is available as I well. See. So yeah. uh, we need to do some filtering uh, and uh, API provides such uh, possibility. It's called show shown only if. Uh, so we need to connect this node to our element context menu and just make some criteria uh, that will tell uh, when and where it should appear this button. So we connect this show only if. And in this case, we, are, we, are, we can just provide simply an element GUIDs, this internal IDs. So select all the windows and provide the IDs so it will appear only uh, under uh, only when we tap the window and will not appear in any other elements. The other options uh, are just a different type of criteria. So again, we do this, what you saw on the previous video. Uh, we are just collecting all the data, all the window elements, so number, number three. And those elements are, uh, uh, Yes, we will put it here uh, as an element of types. So we have a list of uh, windows and we just simply provided this list to uh, element grids. Yeah. And now we can bake it again. So we are baking it and uh, go back to uh, mobile and reload uh, extension so we have to go to the main menu 
taps on extension reload and get back to a model. Okay, it's reloaded. Mm. So now we see that when we click the window, it's visible. And when we click on the other elements, well, it's not visible. So uh, quite simple. It, it's it's definitely much simpler than, than doing, well, in fact, it's not possible to access this layout uh, IDs through Archicad. Um, yeah. But uh, imagine the situations uh, on the web page. You can see the um, you can see the cases uh, where ah, <laughs> here is the the last but not least. If you would like to have um, hyperlinks to all uh, layouts that are in the BIMX, to have them accessible, you know, from the, some spreadsheet on on your mobile uh, to to open the BIMX, to open the model, and to access the layout. We can bake and save all the layouts to CSV file. So it's very simple node uh, that has no output. We have to just, again, provide the BIMX file. So we will use the same node uh, as, we, as we used before. So we provide the, the file. And then uh, we have to create the uh, CSV file, so the path. file yeah. path to the new file, right? Because it must be created. So select the new file location. So let's call it like um, hyperlinks to layouts. And uh, then we will bake it. So this is not possible uh, to do by the hand in Archicad uh, anyhow, as far as I know. Uh, so again, button to bake it. So now we can bake it to a file and see what happened. Okay, the CSV file is created. And when we open it, we see that we, we have these three layouts and, uh, and those hyperlinks created, uh, right? Uh, so this is um, quite handy. And uh, as I mentioned uh, before, uh, on the web page, uh, you can find some tutorials. And one of them is the most popular uh, when we think on the, when we think on uh, creating hyperlinks to BIMX, you probably know this case where uh, we have to compose this hyperlink, uh, but with our uh, nodes, we can select a bunch of elements by any criteria and create one link that will select all of those elements. So there is a one example there where we can, when we have something like a controller object. So when we click the object, uh, then we, we can select other objects that are somehow logically connected to it. So it could be useful yeah. for identifying elements uh, like in MEP projects, for example, some controllers and some uh, terminals. Uh, so with this solution, it's much easier to control uh, control the uh, grouping of those elements. Yeah, nice. So, that's how it works. so these are just a couple of examples, but uh, that we had to decide on. But uh, actually, the the scope of the plugin is much larger, so we can really do much more with it. Uh, you can see some of them are related to BMX. Uh, extension creation or management of files in BMX. The others are more you know, on the Archicad project file. Um, Nathan, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think for people that haven't seen it in action before, I think it's very exciting. Hence, um, you know, why I think it's going to be a game changer. Um, now, we've run a little bit over time and mindful that we said this yeah. was going to be an hour. So let's um, dig into the questions and, and get through those really quickly. Um, but then I'd strongly suggest everyone that uh, sees this video actually goes over to the uh, Archicad API website that we will put a link on this page and on the recording um, and send you across over to that page uh, to be able to see some of the other examples. Um, the challenge being that there's so many opportunities for this um, because it can connect to other things as well. So um, first uh, questions from Eric. 
um, what would be really useful is to be able to schedule IFC exports from BIM Cloud. Do you think that this is something that could be possible through further development of Tapier? Mm, yeah, well, uh, this is uh, definitely something that um, it, it's, n it's not possible uh, at the current stage, and it could be possible by creating these extra features uh, in this add-on, uh, Archicad add-on that would expose the um, certain comments. So uh, also, well, it's because it's uh, exporting from BIM Cloud, so it might be even more complex, but uh, that's why at the beginning I, I, I divided into these three levels of development, so these ideas would be like categorized. So this idea, uh, once of course it needs like proof of concept to see if, if it's possible, but anyway, it's on the, on the stage of creating this add-on. Uh, which yeah. this add-on, I must say, as we uh, investigated, it's, it's quite simple uh, as a whole. Uh, so creating and adding new functionality uh, uh, should be relatively easy. Uh, well, I, I'm I'm just repeating the words of people who knows how to do it, of course, in this case, but yeah. but it's not like a huge add-on that needs a lot of work. Um, uh, so yes, and I think that exactly the ex um, scheduling exports on different formats it's something uh, because not every formats uh, are possible to be scheduled in a publisher. So, but this looks like just it could be done by another. Um, Another add-on. Uh, it's not exactly uh, that Tapir has to do, has to do it. It looks like the idea for um, not not really connected with the uh, with the functionality, main functionality of a, of, a, of a Tapir. But if we would try to do it, yeah, we it would be on this on this stage when we will have this add-on uh, created yeah. and see how to develop it. I will suggest. I don't know, just, uh, I'm just speaking my mind here, but why don't you submit a feedback form? Uh, because this is the type of thing that we should, I mean, Greg and I, we are, I mean, I'm, I'm I don't know, 10% expert, Greg is 40 or 50% expert. And then we have the, I don't know, the, the group of elders that we go and talk to. So, so I think this is the kind of things that we should discuss with this, you know, large development um, mm -hmm. uh, in order to give you an answer that it's like, yes, it's possible with, I don't know, two months of development or two hours of development. We don't know exactly, but it, it seems that it could be something that, that can be further explored. And I think that conversations like this are really important because what it does is it brings ideas to the table and yeah. challenges or ideas that we need to address within our own organizations that help us, right? And mm -hmm. even yeah. if uh, this API doesn't actually address it. What it does is it just kind of highlights the opportunities that are out there for API development um, where yeah. other experts may be able to help um, or yeah. people within the community may be able to develop it as a separate API outside of this if this specific development isn't capable. Um, yeah. So moving on to a question from Julian or more of a comment, I guess. Um, it's good to have ready-made components at hand to grab and modify elements um, as this was rather cumbersome with the Python components until now. But what's the really big thing here now is the possibility to go beyond data management. Is there a possibility to go beyond data management? Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, yeah the, the reason, there are those solutions in uh, already developed. But again, it, this is the... Because the, this is what Python API provides has, um, uh, and the JSON commands that are um, available, they are not, uh, they are just for the data management and um, layout management, but no geometry uh, editing or changing. So at this stage, it's not possible, but it's possible on the stage on this extra functionality of, of this add-on that would yeah. just uh, extract the functions. And already such a solutions, um, 
they are on the GitHub and, and the author of, of the solution, uh, we invited him to, to the community. And uh, so it is, it is possible uh, to, to create such a function where we can edit elements. But again, this is something, uh, yeah, this must be more specified what kind of editing would be because what we want yeah. to do another archicad another grasshopper uh, thing right or uh, because maybe we can combine it so, uh, some uh, somehow the existing tools that's why we work in grasshopper to have also by hand the uh, live connection nodes uh, yeah. right but uh, but yes it is possible uh, but again it's this third stage of development where we will have a uh, other yeah. And I think the key thing from this is, is that by, as you said, by being on the Grasshopper platform, it opens up opportunities to, to essentially connect to these other essential um, components. So, you know, there's been s several presentations that Jorge has done over the last two, three years on the work that Enzyme has done um, with modifying and creating geometry in Grasshopper Rhino to then model and export into Archicad. Um, I'm yep. sure that the next piece of the puzzle is is having all of that sitting there, and then having another set of scripts with Tapir sitting below it to then fuel yep. and feed the data behind that, rather than it's just the geometry. Yep. It might not be this. Um, yep. For example, I had a conversation with John Merchant from Geometry Gym today, who wow. is also a uh, rather significant developer um, computer scientist based out of uh, regional Victoria who has a plugin already developed for um, for Rhino which brings in IFC files so the conversation was yeah. around well how can we use what he's got and then then use off the off the back of all this other development what other opportunities are there to you know essentially manage the data of IFC before it even hits Archicad um, yeah. so that it might completely change the way in which we bring in um, consultants reference IFC models into Archicad yeah. rather than actually bringing it through the translator. Um, yeah. So moving on, so Julian also commented about um, the geometry being a problem. Mate, to my experience, when issuing JSON commands from Grasshopper, there's always a two to four, oh, sorry, a three to four second delay. Other people have reported this also on the Archicad forums. Um, so he's not the only one. Um, is this happening with Tapier? Um, when you shared your screen, there was no noticeable delay. It was almost instantaneous. Have you found a magic <laughs> trick to get past that delay that people yeah, were experiencing? It's a, it, it, it's a TV show's reality versus uh, real reality. Of course, yeah, we, uh, at this stage, uh, uh, Nodes are those nodes are developed on the open in the open manner. So all the nodes, when you click them, you you get the code uh, visible. They are not compiled, and this connection uh, uh, it's working like with the small delays. Uh, and now it's the the big issue here to find a way. Well, already we find a way to compile them. Because uh, we want to stay uh, to develop it in Python, uh, since it's more popular. There was discussion on this because the plugins uh, to Grasshopper can be developed in Python and in C sharp, and we want we would like to stay uh, with, with Python. And uh, at this moment, uh, we are working on the improving the efficiency uh, and performance in this. So yeah, delays are, uh, they were magically uh, removed, not to make you uh, to resign from the, <laughs> from the viewing um, and to make it smooth. But of course we are aware of this. And uh, as, as Jorge has said, th this is the first stage uh, of, of, uh, of, the, of the version of this, uh, of this plugin. Yep. Mm, so we also, in the feedback, we will of course collect all the um, bugs. Uh, that, and performance that, uh, we issues. We are aware well. of. 
we are aware of, of uh, some of them, uh, but yeah, the AC forums is, uh, also would be helpful here to to provide the feedback. I don't mind a few seconds of delay if it does it for me for free. Hey, <laughs> that's the yeah. thing. Hey, um, some positive comments from Francois. Awesome, he loves it. Um, he, he can see the positives out of it and how it's going to work. Um, Alex has also said, amazing tool, guys. Great presentation. He had to leave, but he'll keep up to date with the developments. Um, Ruben's asked a question, and this is what's tested my uh, my lack of knowledge of Grasshopper to date and why I went out and bought a license and got to learn it. Um, Ruben's asked, is it possible to use the selection of IDs with Graphisoft batteries? And batteries yeah. wasn't a term yeah. I was familiar with. This, honestly, I, I don't know what our graphs of batteries cool so it's archicad's think... grasshopper connection yeah yeah yeah. i i realize so he means the 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 live connection from yes so the answer may, may i address this question okay. so the the answer is yes so we can combine the live connection the grasshopper live connection from graphisoft okay. with the uh tapir plugin so they are totally compatible in in fact they complement each other and I might say that something I didn't mention before is that the main difference between live connection and Tapir plugin, we, we don't want to rewrite the live connection. The live connection is already there and it works. What uh, the main difference is live connection is mainly there to create new geometry. So the nodes there enable the creation of new geometry, enable the uh, uh, input of data classifications, uh, properties, but only to new geometry in the file. So I think that's a bit a big thing. What we have achieved here is we are able to access manually build geometry. Like you have your ArchiCAD file done manually, modeled completely in a manual way. And we're able to uh, access those manually placed elements and do the data management, uh, potentially in the future, perhaps change some of the param geometrical parameters, uh, plays with, uh, play with layouts and so on. So it enables us to act, uh, so interact with the existing geometry in ARCHICAD, not so much with new geometry. And you imagine that as a scenario with picking up existing assets and trying to like the one thing to look at with this whole thing is the concept of um, information management and meeting clients' information requirements. Yeah. Um, the challenges we face with having to, we, in the future we will have to build custom templates uh, for each yeah. individual client as their information needs are going to be different. And how we first of all create that template, but then secondly how we populate it. So I think that's uh, quite exciting. Um, and now we will jump on to Matt's. What's your ideas about making it easy to work with several classifications? I only want to have one and then import the others from Excel using the one in my template as a key. I meant many, not several. So several different classification um, systems. Fact, we had this conversation in the group to, as, a, as a concept um to be to somehow uh, map from elements from one classification to another uh, now it's like this that the nodes of classification uh, we can just select by classification so if, if element has two or more classifications we can pick the, um, the, the classification system and then pick the class itself and the uh, objects will be selected and now it's possible to uh, set a set, uh, set existing classification uh, to an element mm. but uh, the idea as i understand here uh, matt would like to somehow map map it yeah so to use the first one as a key uh, yeah to be yeah. to be and bring for uh, example omni class mm -hmm. or or uniqueness and then from, for example, existing ARCHICAD classification, just automatically map all the elements. If that's, so the, I think yeah, that's, the, so this, that's what we all want. Definitely for so the, this, that's is, the wish list item, isn't it? This, I think it's possible now by setting new um, classification. So uh, we, we can just um, 
choose, uh, yeah, we can choose a new class and apply it to an element, but just uh, the way how we choose it, it's, it should be now is it should be done, it could be done by, by hand. So I think that could be interesting kind of node where we can somehow map uh, automatically those. Uh, yeah, yeah. So we need like uh, some database uh, of uh, external database of um, mapping classes. Yeah. Please submit all of this through the form. We, we want to be able to discuss this with the other people. I think they're great, great uh, wish. Wishes, and it yeah. and it also means that it's captured as we've talked about in a in an ordered or organized manner so that your wishes can kind of then be tested and, and adjusted. Kenny McNally, good to see you. Kenny. It's been a few years since uh, since um, we're in Edinburgh, but um, sorry, must have must have missed this. But does this still require Rhino to provide a link between Grasshopper and Archicad? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this was uh, this was discussed in in the first part. Um, so we have chosen uh, Grasshopper first because it's the tool that we all uh, we all know uh, the ones who are involved with the project. Secondly, because it's already a framework that has a lot of existing uh, nodes and 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 well uh, tools to sort of like interact and, and use with our uh, own nodes. Uh, but we uh, we are uh, aware that not every user will have or will buy a Rhino license. So in a further stage of development, we are uh, actually interested on moving this development, not so much moving, but actually sort of like cloning this development into perhaps Blender, that it's a free tool. And uh, and potentially if there is if there are enough resources, which is something we have discussed now but if we have enough resources maybe even creating a standalone node editor for archicad that would be i think the ideal situation for all the archicad users but that requires a significant uh, amount of of development so so we started with something that it's already working and then once we are uh once we're happy with the design uh, and the scope of what we've done and the community is using it then we can move into other platforms yeah. Um, so, Marte commented that he hoped that the delays was due to some firewall settings with a frowny face. So, we all know that that's happening. But I think the couple of seconds of delay, in all honesty, is something that I'd be most more than comfortable with waiting and, and seeing with yeah. some of the information we're trying to push into things and, and getting that for free. Um, Julian's got a comment the right tool for the right use case task nothing to add here but in the end fragmentation is something which should be kept to a minimum and that's the potential power of tapir but i guess that's nothing new to you um so i guess that's probably talking about i guess the the challenges of the all of the pieces of the puzzle and that what could could happen with it but uh i think one of the key things to possibly raise is obviously the workflows that are presented to today tonight to, for me it's uh half past 12 in the morning so you can see the sleep in my eyes but uh the conversations we did have was were surrounding particular workflows if there's the potential to actually kind of almost create custom nodes that contain most of that information all of those half those yeah. steps where possible so the idea will be to try and even simplify it even more for yeah um non-experienced users where possible um and i think that with regards to all the other development you guys i think you've got that under 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 at hand pretty well yeah i think that's that's exactly the idea um we were first i think the first steps this, this is going a project that is going in different stages but the first stage was to okay can we actually replicate the commands from json into grasshopper yes we can now the second step of the development is uh, okay, what are the workflows that actually the community and the Archicad user community need to uh, improve or to get automations on? So those are the kind of feedback that we need. Uh, what are the main, I don't know, 20, 30, 50 workflows that are key for the, 
the Archicad users. So we can actually maybe put that in um, in priority and say, okay, uh, are you, for example, are you interested in improving the automation of uh, window and door uh, the management? Then maybe we can have like one or two nodes that can solve most of the issues in, you know, just using one piece or two or three pieces only. Um, but then we, these kind of things, we need to get the feedback and the, from the community. I think Greg and I, we have stressed that uh, and, and yourself, Nathan, but, but we want the, the engagement of the, this is not a commercial product. We're not developing something to sell to you. We are creating something from a group of interested users that are somehow capable to make this happen for the, the you know, the wide Archicad community. So we want, you know, to integrate as many minds and, and people as possible so this can actually work. Yep, and I think we didn't get to touch on in too much detail tonight, but um, obviously if there's some organisations that are out there that would like some extensive development, then there are opportunities where it's welcome to actually find... We haven't come up with a strategy about sponsoring or, um, you know, there's some if really may... good work from IFC J JSON in terms yeah. of what they've done yeah. with, with bounties and, and, and monies and the like. If I, if I may just share my screen one minute, yep. I think we, we haven't really figured out yet what is going to be the, you know, the, the funding uh, strategy for all these, because obviously uh, a lot of generous people have put, you know, their time and their money into it uh, until now. But the, the moment this starts growing and, and requires a, you know, a long-term um, uh, commitment from, you know, from the developer community, we need to make this sustainable in the time. So uh, we're looking into some innovative ideas uh, to, to self-fund this process and this project uh, that require minimum involvement from the Archicad community, but maybe some involvement, uh, financially speaking, and, uh, and that with that small amount of, of money, we can make great things if there is a lot of people that are helping. Uh, so we're looking into different crowdfunding platforms that can help us to uh, maybe to get those micro uh, foundings from all the Archicad users. And we were joking, Greg and I, yesterday, but uh, imagine that every Archicad user give us one dollar or fifty cents of dollar a month, then we can have maybe three or four people full time on developing these kind of things. Uh, and obviously just uh, being involved with uh, with the community it, it's the power of the of you know of the large numbers on the other hand as you were saying maybe there are larger organizations that are uh, are willing to maybe spend some of their R&D budgets helping us uh, with uh, sponsoring part of this project and in exchange we can provide things like a faster development for certain tools that they need for certain projects, or perhaps customization of of nodes that are available public publicly. But maybe they need some specific outputs or inputs from uh, for their uh, projects. So maybe we can help them to customize certain of of these parts for them. Um, obviously, giving them support and training as well. Uh, uh, and then. We will look into obviously other source of income, maybe tapping into some public funding if for innovation and and technology development, perhaps, or uh, creating some uh, paid training services that that will help us to to get some funding and and distribute between the developer community and the and the trainers. Uh, perhaps some implementation services as well, uh, because the plugin is there, is free, but then obviously. You, put it together. I think that was one of the comments. So so maybe uh, getting some small fee for implementing in some specific projects and that can give us some also some uh, revenue to help us to, to make this project sustainable at long long term. I think that is that is the key that that we don't want to drop this in three or four months. We would like to keep going and have this project self funding and self maintaining, updating with every Archicad version and and so on so so that obviously requires a, a long-term in investment and uh, and we want to make it so uh, you know it's fair for for everyone um so please if you're interested in sponsoring in uh 
helping with the funding, uh, giving us your time for, for development, or maybe you have a, a programmer in your organization that you know you don't mind to uh, uh, to put a few hours of, of time on this. I think that would be a, a, well much appreciated from from all the community, and obviously whoever is uh, you know a patron or or a sponsor, we will uh, publicly uh, uh, expose them and giving them the global exposure in every uh, every presentation, every in the website, everywhere. So so I think that would be also quite a good PR for for everyone. So I think this uh, this is. Uh, all from me. Uh, I don't know if uh, if I have forgotten every, anything. Uh... <laughs> no, mate, you've covered it off. Um, Julian, I just want to close off on two last comments before we put a close to it because we've been going for 90 minutes. So Julian also made a comment about how good John Merchant would be to bring on board this, but um, my interest was in seeing how his plug-in actually could potentially tap into this so that um, how his workflows and some of the workflows that we I did some testing with him um, yeah. back in 2020 um, as to how we can bring in IFC site geometry from land surveyors. So um, there's some really cool stuff that that guy can come up with. And Stuart Clark uh, from the UK, obviously fantastic tool using the ArchiCAD API to access data. Well done, team. Tap your air. All right. Um, that's all from me. Um, thank you very much to Jorge and Greg for taking the time to take us through um, this exciting tool. I, I'm hoping that everyone that's uh, seen it so far and, and watches it on replay um, kind of has their mind whirring. And, uh, you know, every time I sit down with the guys and, and see what this can do, I struggle to sleep for a few hours. So it's going to be hard doing a school <laughs> drop-off in the morning. But uh, with uh, the mind whirring for the next couple of hours and trying to get a couple of hours sleep in before uh, school drop-off, um, but thank you very much guys thank you very much for taking the thank time you, for Nathan. sharing yeah. your work um, and I hope that the community can see the benefits of how this can add value to um, their ARCHICAD workflows and, and their organisation so thanks very much thank you guys thank you. and thanks everyone for, for, <laughs> for your time seeing this take yeah. care and welcome to uh, we invite you to, to take part in in this project. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.